<coughs> Let's pray. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord, for this morning. Thank you that we can learn from Job and uh, play some games together. We pray you bless our time. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. amen. A little bit, little bit soon on that, amen. <laughs> All right, last week. What did we do last week? Who remembers? Do you remember? John. Simon? We learned about Esther. Esther, right. And the Jews had light and gladness and joy and honor. Let's read this together. You ready? Esther chapter 8, verse 16. The Jews had light and gladness and joy and honor. Very good. Now this week, oh, we're going to talk about why God lets you suffer. Who likes suffering? Ah, oh, you like suffering? You like suffering? See, I tricked you there. Who likes suffering? Oh, nobody likes suffering. But you know, God lets us go through suffering sometimes. And one of the stories we can learn about in the Bible of God letting someone go through suffering is the book of Job. So we'll look at our memory verse today. It's from Job 23. Job chapter 23, verse 10. <clears throat> but he knoweth the way... I'll read, I'll read it first. But he knoweth... I'll read it first. <laughs> but he knoweth the way that I take. When he hath tried me, I shall come forth as gold. You see, God knows what you go through. Well, he knows what you go through. And when he hath tried me, when he allows me to go through that suffering, look at this, I shall come forth as gold. So why does God let you go through suffering? It's not a nice thing, is it? not a nice thing. It's like with the, you know, you've got a sore arm there, but, you know, other things that happen to you. Some people have health problems and things like that. Sit up properly, please, Atticus. God lets you go through these things. Why? I shall come forth as gold. It's going to make you better. A bit like these clothes here, nice and bright and shiny. Like gold. Isn't that right? Sit up, please. Thank you. Let's read it together. You ready? Now we'll read it together. Job chapter 23, verse 10. But he knoweth the way that I take. When he hath tried me, I shall come forth as gold. Well, let's look at Job's story. You know Job's story? Job. You know Job's story? That's good. Well, I'll tell you, about, tell you a bit about it this morning. You can see the pictures. Job <coughs> was a very righteous man, wasn't he? Yeah? And God looked very well on Job. Job had family. You know, he's got his family here. He's blessed with family. And he also had a lot of cattle and herds and things like that. He was quite blessed with riches and material possessions. And even when he would pray to God, he would offer up an offering to God even on behalf of his children, just in case his children had done something wrong. He said, I don't know, if they maybe have sinned in their heart. And he was interceding on behalf of his children, even praying for them. If they had done wrong, well, in heaven, what happens? Satan comes to God amongst the other angels there, right? And says, God says to Satan, have you seen uh, Job? Look at him, he's a pretty good bloke, isn't he? <laughs> he's doing well. And what does Satan say? Who knows? Does anyone know the story? Some of you know the story? Do you remember what he says? He says, well, you, he only is like this because look at how much you've blessed him with, your family and things like that. So God says to him, all right, we'll test him. You can go and you can touch any of his things. You can, you know, take them away or do whatever you want with them. But what does he say? But you can't touch Job. So what does Satan do? Satan goes and then... The servants are coming to Job and it's like, oh, this, these people came and took all our cattle, stole them. Another place, he said, the fire came down from heaven and burnt up the herds. At the same time, when that servant comes, 
another servant comes and says, you know, a band of thieves came and took all the camels away. Everything's getting stolen and even another servant comes and he says, your children were having a party at one of their houses and a big wind came and blew the house down and now they're all dead. Only he's alive to tell him. How do you think Job's feeling at this point? What do you think? Sad. He's really sad. He's going through this suffering. He doesn't know that God has allowed him to go through this suffering. But do you think he gets angry? Think he gets mad? No. He just prays to God and says, you know, the Lord has given, the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. He didn't sin with his mouth. So he proved himself that he trusted God there. Well, Satan comes back to God. God says to him, ah, look, yeah, you took away all these things and still is faithful to me. Yeah, he says, well, we'll see what happens if we now touch his body, right? If we do something to him physically. Sit down. <laughs> so Satan goes, now what? Oh, puts all these boils on his body from the top of his head all the way to his feet, and he has to sit there with a piece of a pot. It's like scraping his sores. I don't know if it's itchy or he's getting rid of all the pus. Can you imagine if you ever had a blister? Who's had a blister? I've had a blister. What happens when you pop a blister? Ooh, it's gross, isn't it? You shouldn't pop blisters. You pop blisters again. So here he is with all these boils. The big blisters. That's what boils are. You can put your hand down, Simon. And not only that, even his wife says to him, curse God and die. Oh, he says to his wife, wow, you speak like the silly women speak, the foolish women speak. So even, not only that he's lost everything, and he's lost his health, even his wife isn't supporting him anymore. Isn't that terrible? <coughs> so Job wonders why this is happening to him and his friends come to him, they try and comfort him, and then they talk amongst themselves, don't they, TJ? They talk amongst themselves. Sit down. Okay. And they start asking. Right, Noah? They start asking, oh, you know, maybe God has allowed it for this reason, or maybe he's doing it to you because you've got some sin in your life. And they're trying to figure out, and Job's thinking, oh, I haven't, there's no sin that I haven't kept from God. Is there? So they talk. And they're not very good friends. The whole time, they're trying to blame Job that he's done something wrong. And Job can't think of anything, you know, that he's done majorly wrong that would bring this sort of judgment on his life. They talk. And eventually, a young man, he, uh, his name is Elihu, he tries to correct all the older men. You know, he, uh, three, his three fans here, and then you have... Elihu here. And after he speaks, this is when God reveals himself. God comes and speaks to Job, doesn't he? Now, God never tells Job that he let Satan do all those terrible things. Do you know what God says to Job? He just asks him questions. He says, where were you when I made the world? You know, do you know everything about me? Do you know how the world is created? He says, do you know how the eagle flies in the air? And he asks him all these questions. He says, have you seen the ostrich? Ostrich, he talks about the ostrich. And things like that. He even talks about, behold, behemoth. You know, and saying, hey, this is a big animal, but you know, God is bigger than that. And even, what's another animal he talks about? You know, Leviathan. Leviathan's like a fire-breathing dragon. <laughs> Leviathan. He says, hey, if you're scared of Leviathan, imagine what happens if you were to stand before God. Right? So God is trying to remind him how big and strong and fearful and how wise he is. And Job realizes, I don't know everything. I just have to trust God. And that's the lesson that God is trying to teach Job. So isn't it interesting that we know that all these things happened to Job because of Satan, but Job didn't know that this was the reason. 
And then he basically prays on behalf of his friends who are making these accusations. And look, he's <laughs> walking on sad because he was trying to blame Job for things. And in the end, God made it good for Job, didn't he? We saw the end of Job. Sit down. God made it good for Job and he had more family and more children. So, why does God let us go through suffering? Well, what can we learn from Job? See, Job was a righteous man. So he wasn't being punished because of something that he had done in particular. But God wanted to teach Job. He wanted to mold Job. He wanted to make him like gold. And through this suffering, he learned to trust God even more, didn't he? Okay, so... That is the story of Job, and we'll just read through the memory verse again for this week. You ready? We'll read it together. Job chapter 23, verse 10. But he knoweth the way that I take. When he hath tried me, I shall come forth as gold. You see, that's why God lets us go through suffering. He's making us better, isn't he? Okay. Hope you learned something there this morning. Katarina has some games for us this morning, so we'll stand up and let's uh, make sure we're listening to Katarina.